The other day, I was trying to solve a challenge that my friend Amit Sheen had sent me, and along the way, I learned a couple of new tricks or things I guess you could do with animations and transitions that I never knew about. And it got me thinking a little bit that there's actually a whole bunch of neat little things that can help us save time or simplify things or just fun tricks that we can do with animations and transitions that a lot of people aren't actually aware of, and I figured it'd be a good idea to make a video about those. And so here we are, and yeah, we might as well just dive right into it and jump into VS Code right here. And we're going to be starting off with this button, but then we'll bring some other things in along the way as well uh, to explore the different stuff we can do. So one thing that's super common is to have something where we sort of scale things up or have some sort of transform at least on the button. So here I'm, I'm just transitioning it or translating it, I should say, upwards a little bit. Uh, when we hover on top, it's a lot more than I would actually do. So I'm just exaggerating it a bit for this video. Uh, and then what we often do is put a transition here where we do say like 500 milliseconds. And on that transition, we'll do our transform. We have transition, transform, translate. My mind is getting fried with that. Uh, we'll just say 500 milliseconds. And we get something like that where it just looks a little bit better, right? Where it eases in and out. But we can actually make this a bit better. And let's exaggerate things here a little bit. So let's say when we hover on top, it's going to go. And you know what? I said we're going to exaggerate this. Let's really exaggerate it. So when we go on top, it really moves up and then it moves back down there. And this is completely fine, but we can add a little bit of more interest to our animations by actually having different ones depending on the state. So I'm going to copy this right here and we're going to put a different transition when we're hovering. And now let's just say this is 250 milliseconds. So when I first hover on top, it goes really fast. The button's excited. We're going to click it. And then when we let go, oh, right. Uh, so we sort of get the little, the little let down. And I, I think it adds a little bit more excitement that way. So this is when we're hovering on top and then the regular one when we're not. And this is something that I actually do quite a bit. I think it's a nice fun way to have a different speed, a different timing function, uh, different things going on. Sometimes we're only transitioning something in one direction, but not the other. Uh, and it can be a nice, very useful thing to use on your projects. Now, next, I want to look at some animation stuff rather than transitions. And I've just set things up to add a class of party time when we click on our button. And over here, I have an animation with some keyframes going on. So let's say that class of party time, party time, we can do our animation of a party and we'll do and we'll say 2000 milliseconds so it's not too fast and we'll say infinite like that so now if we come and click on it we start getting our party time going on and if i click it again it will stop so that's perfect and it looks you know pretty good uh it looks terrible but anyway um but the first thing i want to look at here is actually how we can change the order of these and it won't really matter and you know what, let's just simplify things a little bit by only having um, or look we're red, orange, red. But let's take this red here and put it um, above. So we're doing we have red, red, orange, but we have a 0% here, 40%, then 20%. So if I save this and we click, it's still going red, orange, red. And then we'll, you know, you know that, that orange is still coming in here. So uh, or even, you know, let's just make this green so we can see that it's actually going to go Right, we get the green, then we get the uh, the green first, and then it's followed up. Or sorry, we get the orange first, and then after that, the green. And maybe we'll make this a little bit slower just to make it a little bit more obvious. Um, so we get the orange first, then we get the green, even though the green is declared first because it's not the order that's important. It is the percent along in the animation that is important. Now let's click on that to stop it for now so it doesn't bother us too much. And let's come in here and actually delete a whole bunch of these. And something that's interesting is let's put this at 50% or maybe we'll do it at 25%. It will go to yellow. Uh, but let's say I wanted another red to come in. I could actually come here and say at 50%, it's going to be red. Then here I could say at 75%, it's going to be yellow. And then at 100%, we can come in with one more and say that the background color on the last one here, let's just choose this because it's showing oh, it's a little bit too close to red actually. Uh, let's make it 200 so it's more in the blues and now we can click on that and it's going to cycle through and it's going to do all of them before going to the blue at the end there so it's doing zero 
then the 25, then the 50, then the 75 here. So we're combining different keyframes with one declaration. And this can be useful just to, if you have a very simple animation that just has a few things in it, instead of having to have a whole bunch of keyframes, you might be switching between two of them like we're doing here, or uh, whatever it is, you can combine them no problem at all. And another thing you could actually do here is let's get rid of all of these and at 100%, let's just, or we could just See, keep it like that and that's not going to be obvious enough <laughs> so let's make this one 300 so we're back into like the purples and we'll notice that the color is, is going and then it's we're on infinite so it gets to the end and then it starts over we're not alternating through but you'll notice the 100 percent point and i have nothing else declared and it's using the zero percent as just the regular default that we are using here which was a variable i have set up that is clearly blue so you don't actually have to declare any starting point. And maybe you have a whole bunch of different things. They all get pushed in one thing. So it could be a transition for, you know, a translating or something or whatever it is. You don't have to worry about the starting point. You can just worry about the ending point. Or I could do this as a 50% and then it would actually go and then come back. So we get the purple and then halfway through the animation and then it goes back to the default color. Uh, after that. So just having a 50% like that sometimes can actually be really useful. Now for this next one, we're actually going to jump over to code pen because this is the challenge. And this is one of those things I found out doing the challenge uh, that I never would have expected, to be honest. And it was to create this effect right here where it slowly speeds up and just keeps on spinning. And then it slows down when we come off and it's not using any JavaScript to be able to do that. And the way this is basically working is I have this animation that's going. So we have it right here and we run that animation when we hover. So when I hover on top, it's going to start doing the spinning and it's doing a transform to rotate it 360 degrees. But we want it, normally that would just sort of go at full speed from the very beginning, which we didn't want. And this is where I found out you can actually do a rotate. So we have like rotate, transform, and scale are their own properties now. Do check with browser support if you do plan on using them. But uh, basically what I'm doing is on hover, I'm reverse rotating it and we have a transition on that. So it's going from negative 720 to zero. So it's negative rotating while the other thing is going, but that negative rotation is actually slowing down as that's going on. And then at one point it's not running anymore. And then we get the thing at full speed. And then when I come off of the hover, it sort of the, the opposite effect is happening. I don't know why you'd necessarily want to do this in the real world, but the transform rotate and the actual rotate can be used as two separate properties counteracting each other in certain ways. This is the use case I found for it. If you'd like more, watch the video where it's a little bit more clear on exactly how that's happening, uh, because at first I did it with a parent. But anyway, just something that I thought was really interesting. So I wanted to share it as part of this video. All right. So for this next part, I've added a whole bunch of dots all along here. And those you can see them right there. They're red, we have some basic styling coming on them so we can see them. Uh, and I've also added this dot dance with a very simple animation on here that's just making them rise over two seconds using this. And we want them to actually be dancing rather than rising. Uh, and I have updated the JavaScript that just toggles that. So when we click the button or the dots rise and fall back down because we are running it as an alternate. So there we go that we have them bouncing up and down basically. And one way you can make it a little bit more interesting is using animation delays. And because we have 15 dots, the easiest way to have a different animation delay on each one of them is to use SAS here. So I am using a SAS for loop that's just going through each one. If you're not familiar with SAS, basically we're saying for I, so the variable I here, from one through 15. So the first time it does it, this will be nth child one, like we have right there, 100 milliseconds times the number one, so 100. Then it's gonna do it again for the second one, so this becomes nth child two, 100 times two, so we get a delay of two, then a delay of three, then a delay of four, then a delay of five, all the way up, uh, but we can write a lot less code to make it happen. So now if I click, you'll see that it starts and they all start going up and down. And it looks kind of nice, actually, I think, starting off like that. And let's just click to turn it off. And we'll do that again. But you'll notice when we do that, it starts at the first one and it runs all the way through. And then they all have that because we are delaying the animation. But what's interesting with animation delays is if you have it as a negative number, it's not actually, it's going to just start where it would have started, right? They, the delay, we're not delaying 100 milliseconds before the next one starts. It's just saying like, if there was a delay, but we were starting in the middle of the animation, where would we be? 
So it's in this case, probably nicer actually without the animation delay on there. But uh, with sometimes, if depending on the situation that you're in, sometimes you need them all just to be starting at the right spot rather than uh, you know having that slow delay that would happen every time you start something. Really depends on the use case. It's not as often you will need the negative on there, but every now and then you'll be very happy you know about it. And this next one is less so of an animation tip. Well, it's very important for animations and, and motion in general that I should say. Um, but what we generally or what we often want to do is be aware that people don't always like motion and they have preferences in their browser. They can turn the motion off and then they get to this website that might be attacking their senses. And it can go really far to the point of causing nausea or headaches and they're going to leave your website if they're not enjoying the experience. But luckily, it's really easy to accommodate. <laughs> All we have to do is we can come here and we could say at media and we use a prefers reduced motion. No preference. And I'll make that a little bit bigger so we can see it all and just wrap it like any old media query. Uh, right. So we just have something like that. And now for me, where I have no preference set, my animation is still running. But if I come and I inspect on that, and in your inspector, you can do, or in Chrome anyway, you can do a control shift P, Mac would be a command shift P, and I can do an emulate and prefers reduced motion reduce, which is the system setting. And look, the animation's not running. Um, for some things, you might want to keep the animation. If it's little things, it's not turn off animation. It's not no animation or no motion. It prefers reduced motion. So you could use this to reduce the motion that's on things, but keep little things around there. Like if you have a toggle button that slides across, that's not bothering anyone. Um, it's more for things where you have vestibular orders or other stuff where motion that's moving in the wrong direction. So as you're scrolling and then you have things that are going in a different way, you could always disable that just by wrapping everything inside your no preference right there. And this could even be for your smooth scrolling as well. When you click and it smooth scrolls down, some people it really throws them off. My wife hates pages scrolling. So um, yeah, for, for those types of things, it's really easy to do. And we just want to be aware that, well, you might really like that motion you've created and it looks amazing. There are a lot of people out there who not only don't like it, but it actually can have physical effects on them. So we want to be careful about that. And if you'd like to know more about this, because I'm just sort of brushing over it really quickly right now, but I'll link to another video in the description uh, where I did a bit more of a deep dive on this. And now before we jump into the next one, I just want to say that this is far from an exhaustive list. So if there's any tips or tricks or anything like that that I've missed along the way, leave a comment down below and let, let me know and let everyone else know because uh, animations, there's so much cool stuff we can do with them. But yeah, let's jump into the next tip now. Now for the next thing that's interesting is not only can we do multiple ones like this, but I actually learned something along the way in that challenge that I talked about with Amit before uh, that didn't work for the thing, but it made me learn something new. Let's go back up to my button. And on this one, what we're going to do is on the party here, we're going to add something that's maybe a bit weird, uh, but let's do a rotate of uh, 180 degrees. And so now when I click it, it's going to spin around and spin back around. Now, this has also gone a little bit crazy in the background because the party is being used on those other guys. Uh, and I wasn't expecting that. I think it looks kind of fun, but it's a little bit distracting. So let's take that off. Um, and you know what? We're, we're just going to take this whole thing off. We're not going to worry about the buttons. We're just going to worry about that guy that's rotating 180 degrees back and forth. Uh, and what we're going to do is let's say it's going to take a thousand milliseconds to do it. So I click and it's going to go there and come back and it only does it once. And then I can actually do, we, we can have multiple animations. We can actually do a comma and do party again. And this time we're going to do it over 2000 milliseconds. These are both going to run at the same time. So it's a bit weird. So let's come here and do a 1500 millisecond delay as well. So I can click, it's going to do the first one and then the second one. And then you could do a third one if you wanted to. So just a comma and then we can do party. Let's do 5,000 milliseconds and we'll have to have a 1,000, 2,000, we'll say a 4,000 millisecond delay on this. We're getting really exaggerated. And let's do this one as um, infinite, infinite alternate, alternate, just because why not? I don't know if I spelled that right. We'll find out in a second. So I click first one, second one, and third one, much slower. 
And that one should keep running as long as I spelt everything correctly, which it looks like I did. So just to say, uh, in this situation, again, silly demo, probably not the best use case for it, but it is interesting that you can actually, you know, you could have the animation run once in one way and then run again in a different way or to continue running once it's slowed down or whatever it is. You could come up with some interesting stuff here. All right, and now the last tip is a, an interesting one. It's something that I've talked a little bit about and people have been asking me to talk more about uh, which is, or let's come, we're going to look at our button here. Let's turn off that translate. Um, and let's change this background a little bit that's on here. And we're going to set this as a linear gradient, linear gradient, uh, gradient from, we'll do red to blue to match my background and hit save. Let's do 45 degrees here, um, or 90 degrees, I guess. We'll just go left to right, 90 degrees. There we go. Have that set up. Um, and yeah, so we have that and people often want to animate the gradient that's on there. There's tricks of doing it where you're sort of moving your gradient around. But one thing we can't do is animate this red color here. And so just to show you, if we come here and we change this and let's make this blue and we'll make this one go to red on that side. And this will be my background. And background is not an animatable or background image, I should say, is not an animatable property. So when we have that, you can see it doesn't animate. And if you're saying it's because it's not the same property, you can fix that right there. It still doesn't animate or transition because it's not an animatable property because it's looking for an image, basically. And we can't really change the value of red. And so the first solution that people got very excited about, let's just come here and say this is a uh, color one will be red and then color two will be blue and then give me one second and i'll get all of these set up and there we go we have it set up and, and, and you can see that it's still working i still have it and then what we could come down here instead of updating this you know you'd think it would make sense that we could update these two values right there instead but we still get the same thing and that's because custom properties are something that could literally be anything the browser doesn't have enough information to know if it's actually able to do anything with them. Uh, there's a lot of technical reasons why we can't animate a custom property in the way I'm trying to do right here. And this is happening because once again, we're trying to uh, you know, transition the background image. And luckily recently, or Chrome's had this for a while and very recently it just got added to Safari. So we're just waiting on Firefox, but uh, we have at property. And app property allows us to declare or to register custom properties. So I'm going to have app property and we're going to say color one. And we have to give it three different things. We want to give it a syntax, inherits, and an initial value. So the initial value we know, we want this to be red at the beginning. The inherits could be true or false. It's up to you. I'm just going to say it's true because why not? And the syntax here is going to be a color. And you can see VS Code's syntax or their, their highlighting here is not too happy with me, but that's fine. Uh, I'm going to take these. As far as the syntax, it can be a lot of different things, but since we're using colors and it doesn't have to be a keyword, it could be any color, HSL, RGB, whatever. Um, so color two will be blue. And everything broke for me because I forgot to put this inside of quotation marks. There we go. And look, the syntax highlighting is better too, I think. Um, though it could be a little bit prettier. There we go, got to hit the right keys. Ah, now it's working. Um, and now the advantage of doing this and the advantage of registering a custom property is if, and just really fast, like you just look up the different things, you can do colors, numbers, um, different values, strings. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So now instead of transitioning a background image, which can't be transitioned, we could transition my color one. And we can just do a comma here and do my color two over 1000 milliseconds. So now if we hover on top, oh, we can see it's not going that way, but it is going the other way. That's because this transition is getting in the way. So let's hit save. And now you can see that it's transitioning the colors. It's not transitioning the image. It's transitioning the custom properties themselves. And this is kind of cool because you could actually do like different types of things, right? So it completely changes the style. Maybe this one even gets like a 1000 millisecond delay on it. So it's all, the whole thing goes blue and then the red comes in. You can do so much fun stuff with this. I'm so excited for app property. It's part of Houdini. Uh, there's lots of really other awesome stuff coming with it. 
as well. But the control we'll get over our custom properties with this is going to be amazing. And as I said, it's already supported in Chrome. It's very recently landed in Safari. Uh, and it's really, really cool what we can do with it. And as a reminder, if you want that video where I talk more about prefers reduced motion, as well as two other very simple changes you can make to your CSS that can make very big improvements on it, that video is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank Michael, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.